welcome to Manny Days. I'm your host, Kina Estel. And I'm her little sidekick, Mark Leslie. It was an exciting summer here at Berea College. Students worked hard academically as well as in their labor positions, but still found time to have fun. Though the temperatures were unusually mild, the Berea College campus was on fire. And not only were students developing their skills on campus, a large portion of the student body were enhancing their abilities in a variety of internships around the country. So in this first episode, we'd like to highlight some of the projects, events, and programs that took place summer 2009 at Berea College. College students weren't the only residents on Berea's campus this summer. The Berea College Upward Bound program hosted approximately 150 high school students and staff counselors from surrounding Kentucky counties. For more than 35 years, Berea has hosted this program, which seeks to help young people prepare for higher education. The six-week summer session includes instruction, counseling, and a chance for educational development, giving high school students the chance to experience college life so as to promote a successful future. We talked with Berea College senior John Holbert, a communications major from Birmingham, Alabama, about his experience as a counselor for Upward Bound. We have a maybe 18 hour day every day. We wake up every morning and I fulfill three functions. I'm a uh, counselor, a teacher, and pretty much I supervise them from the time we get up. Um, I'm in charge of seven guys and they're like my small family. And those are the ones that I'm, I mentor on a regular basis. I make sure I keep up with them as far as their academics see if they're adjusting well to the program, um, talk about relationships, and the other problem they might have. It's been great so far. I'm supposed to be going into education, so I'm gonna need to know how to interact with young students. But, I mean, honestly, I have my, my days where I don't really wanna get up and those hard times, but honestly, by the end of the day, it's all worth it. I got insight into how my teachers felt when I was younger, and not only the times that I messed up, but um, I had certain teachers who would tell me that I couldn't behave like everybody else, like they would treat me differently, be harder on me, and I didn't understand why. And they would always say, I see more in you. And I would say, I would ask myself, like, how do they see something in me if I'm not putting that out there? But I just have, I just, I can look at students and tell if they're not performing up to their full potential. And then we can talk about that, why they're not doing that. But this is a big commitment. Like I said, I'm working from 6 a.m. until maybe 11.30 at night. So there's pretty much no free time come ready to learn because you might be in a situation where you're supposed to be a tutor and you're supposed to be teaching them like during the day but at the end of the day I think you've learned more about life lessons and how to interact with people. You cannot be in this job for the money. You have to be in it for the enrichment process and I guess bettering these, better these young people. Aside from working class, many students were able to enjoy the thrills and chills of Kings Island near Cincinnati, Ohio. Campus Life and the Campus Activity Board co-sponsored three trips to the amusement park and one visit to the Kentucky Renaissance Fair in Eminence. Where there's usually only one summer trip scheduled, CAB decided that several trips would allow more students the chance to travel and have fun. Students were only required to pay five dollars. Now that's a minimal fee for such an adventure. CAB member Jessica Gardner gives more detail about the trips. CAB is the Campus Activities Board. It's a group of students that volunteer to carry out pretty much the student fee that each student gives amongst their term bill. So we just take that and we try to provide fun events that caters to all students. According to residential life, there's an overwhelming amount of students staying this summer. So we wanted to cater to that. Um, it's a higher demand and um, I think we did pretty well. It's probably about 80 opportunities because no student was able to sign up twice. I think we accommodate to a lot of people. I'm a big roller coaster fan. I really like roller coasters. Ready to scream, lose my voice, I'm excited. <laughs> this is how Berea is, takes care of you in everything, so I'm so excited to go fun. We're back. Well, the high school students really look like they enjoyed themselves this summer. Upper Bound was truly a great experience. And I bet Kings Island was a blast too. Kings Island? Man, I wish I could have gone to the Renaissance Fair in Eminence. I've always wanted to eat a giant turkey leg, you know? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, hold on. I think we need a change in scenery before we introduce the next segment. Yeah, I agree. Watch this. No, that's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Help me out. Okay, okay. Ready? 
Now that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's a time to play and a time for work. Fortunately, many students found a way to do both this summer. Two Berea College students worked hard interning for the Berea College Farm, and one super senior finished his college career with a standing ovation. While locally grown food is becoming more popular throughout Kentucky, Berea College is working harder to supply fresh goods and produce to the community. Through the efforts of several staff and student interns, the Berea College Farm and Farmers Market have both seen success this summer. We talked with Ag Department Chair Sean Clark and a few of his student workers about the resurgence of sustainable consumerism. The Berea Farm started in the late 1800s. Uh, the first garden was in the early 1870s. So the, the farm is about 140 years old. Uh, the Berea Farmers Market started uh, several decades ago. Bill Best was the, uh, the founder and it continues today though it's in a, a new location. Students also understand that their role is important, that we count on each one of them individually to get the work done that's, that's needed. Well, there's a strong push for local foods in, foods in the community itself and uh, we're basically just trying to facilitate that with providing as much local food as we can. Keeping the money that is spent on food localized in this community enables the farmers to grow more so that they can you know, sell more to us and soon, hopefully, you know, we'll gain independence from the industrialized food production system. The, the goal for the farm in general is, is really twofold. One, it's a, it's a laboratory for students in the A&R department. So all of the classes that we teach use the farm to some extent to um, bring students out in the field and have them get hands-on experience. The other goal is to have the, mo the farm serve as a model of sustainable agriculture in this region. We're trying to switch over to organic, uh, all organic. We're in the process of transitioning to that and also adding a few features that will help at market and with uh, promoting the local food system such as uh, an inventory system and a point of sale system that we can use to keep track of all of our meats and produce. Uh, and then also we're trying to get kind of like a, a value added sector up off the ground where we can start producing uh, more ready to eat products from the raw materials that we're producing on the farm. So I guess that would be the two big goals as far as my summer internship goes. My personal focus was on getting more local foods in restaurants. So I was presenting um, sort of this Kentucky Proud, which is a part of the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. We have seen some, some interesting signs of a, of a more vibrant local food system. We have um, uh, more locally available meat. Uh, there's a new store in town called the Better Beef. Uh, it's a local farmer. Uh, the farmer's market is seeing more vendors coming and selling produce. As the demand goes up, I mean, that makes more opportunities for all the farmers that are at farmer's market now. The more that the general public is becoming aware of um, the issues surrounding food security, the more that, you know, they're going to demand to know where their food comes from. Eat local, uh, work hard, and don't forget to grow a garden because the more food that's grown locally, even if it's just like a tomato plant, that's doing its part. While many students see summer as a time for relaxation, for one graduating senior, it was the peak of his college career. Sedarian Crawford, a theater major from Birmingham, Alabama, put together his own independent stage play, The Misfits. In addition to working and taking two other classes, Crawford's days were filled with rehearsals, costume choices, set construction, and play promotion, among other details. The Misfits is a story about overcoming racial barriers and crossing ethnic boundaries so as to better understand God's love for all. Opening night brought a packed house to Union Church in Berea. The cast and crew of over 25 Berea College students also wowed audiences during its two-week tour in Birmingham. So much about struggling and so much about the struggle and I don't. <laughs> Why don't you tell me what it's like to have a wife who's six weeks pregnant and dying of cancer? It's either him or you. Now, Dickie, I don't know who you think you're talking to, and I don't know what you think this is, but you will not lay a finger on that young lady or her husband. Mountie Day's own Marcus Leslie was present opening night and had a chance to speak with director Sedarian Crawford. We, we've been working on it for about a month and a half, about a month and a half, so about six weeks. Yeah. A couple of the challenges, uh, one was definitely scheduling. Um, the thing about this cast, man, a lot of people are involved in a lot of different things. Uh, so, and I appreciate their dedication, man. It was 
it was hard getting schedules together, but you know, they, they came together and they, they did what I asked them to do. This cast was amazing. It was really amazing. Um, I've never seen a group of people who can go from not being willing to do so much and then be willing to perform so well. You know, so this was this, this was an amazing experience. They're an amazing cast, an amazing crew. You know, everybody everybody's getting along pretty well. We've had bumps, you know, in the road, but man, we we've really enjoyed ourselves. Definitely. Well, there you have it. I'm here with Dan Crawford, the Misfits. It was absolutely amazing. You gave me chills, brother. <laughs> All right. You, man. All right. Well, we're just about done here on Mountie Days. Our last segment is something we like to call our Learning Labor Service Spotlight. And for this episode, we picked what we felt was the Bridge College Summer Project, which best exemplified these three characteristics. But I'm not going to be around for this one because they just told me that the turkey legs are in from Eminence. <laughs> the big old turkey legs. And I'm about to go get one before they all go. So I'll be back. You do that, Mark. <laughs> This episode's spotlight goes to the Berea College Entrepreneurship for the Public Good Program and their Summer Institute. For eight weeks, a select group of students engage in the study of entrepreneurship, leadership, and community development. This summer's focus was on economic development in both Berea and Hyman, Kentucky. Led by Drs. Peter Hackbert and Daniel Huck, the EPG Fellows sought to uncover localized opportunities to help each area prosper. Let's see how it all went down. We're here in uh, Knott County, uh, developing entrepreneurial leadership opportunities, working in four sectors, the artisan sector, the adventure tourism sector, a sustainability sector, and a health and uh, wealth sector, trying to discover ideas and turning those ideas into opportunities that could create economic development for the community. We uh, spend very little classroom time while we're out here. Most of the time, students are out in the field working, interviewing, observing, uh, working on financial issues. We meet each morning and each night, of course, to keep ourselves together and think through the issues and analyze. But most of it is hands-on work in the field with people in Appalachia who are out there living and working every day. You're not going to learn about what it takes to create new businesses, new ventures in southeastern Kentucky unless you're out working in southeastern Kentucky. Knott County has uh, experienced some mountaintop removal uh, reclamation sites and as a part of that uh, there have been 600 acres set aside specifically for an ATV tourism uh, training center and a elk viewing uh, site. We're here at the lake uh, looking at uh, the marine opportunities. The students in the artisan community have been uh, visiting with artists in the incubator. In the health and wellness area, they've uh, experienced the sports complex, which uh, provides basketball and baseball tournaments for the community. We're going to, um, we're going to physicians, doctors, and we're finding um, out information about what things they might need or what programs they want to promote more. I'd say the students are right where we expect them to be. Now they're using those skills. They'll actually have uh, four different facilitations of so four different groups of community members to talk about new ideas and actually get ready to present a plan with financing, with resources of all different types before the summer session ends. What I'm learning is basically how to be an entrepreneurial leader. I'm learning how to be more focused with my ideas, be more understanding with uh, the people that I talk to, basically interviewing people, learning how to interview people, how to ask, or ask the right questions. You know, the feedback from our professors is helping us a lot in terms of uh, knowing how to improve uh, for the next year, because next year is kind of the continuation of the program. We can be a catalyst for individual communities to start creating new ventures, new entrepreneurial endeavors. We can be a catalyst for the region coming together. Um, that's really our goal over this next decade or so. And that was a really fun trip. <laughs> At least it was for me. It was really fun. And time flies when you're having fun. Like this show. <laughs> We're out of time here, but thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Keena Astle, here with my sidekick, Mark Leslie. Join us next time on... Mountie Days. <laughs>